Hi there and welcome to another great session that I have lined ahead for you. Now I'm sure that you are familiar with those laws that specify the age of marriage, the age at which a person can vote and perhaps even the laws that deal with buying and selling of property. We know that the parliament is in charge of law making and these are the laws that apply to everyone. But do you know how did the law come into existence? Where did it originate from in India? And apart from that, is there any way that the new laws can be made? If there is any law that is unpopular amongst the citizens, then what can the citizens do about it? Yes, I know I have asked you a lot of questions and now it's time to find out the answers to these. They are going to be answered in our topic, Understanding Laws. So let me begin by giving you a situation. Imagine a scenario where a young individual has been given a 10-year jail sentence by a district court for a crime that he has committed. Now his father was a prominent government official so he could help him to go into hiding and the convicted was able to get away from the sentence. Now let me ask you a question here. Do you think that the government official did the right thing? No, he didn't. Just because he was a politically powerful man, should his son be treated any differently from the rest? That isn't right. This is a clear case where the law got violated. Because as per the Indian judiciary system, no one is above the law and everybody is equal in the eyes of the law. That is why even our judiciary system is represented by Lady Justice who always is blindfolded. Now it is to represent that the law is blind. It does not differentiate between individuals, neither does it favour anyone. Now let me take you back to when and how the laws were made in our country. When our constitution was being written, every member of the constituent assembly had agreed that no one shall misuse the power that was given to them for any kind of personal gain. They therefore made many provisions in the constitution to ensure that once the law is established, no one could get away with doing anything that was against it. The most important of these laws was that every citizen of the independent India is equal before the law irrespective of who they are. So the law does not have the ability to discriminate between anyone on the basis of their religion, caste or gender. And this applies to every citizen of the country equally and also no one can ever be above the law. Which means anybody, neither the government official nor a wealthy person, as a matter of fact, not even the president of the country is above the law. Any crime that is committed or the law that is violated has a specific punishment according to our constitution. Also, the process through which the guilt of the person has to be established is done in a very specific way. But was it always like this? Well, way before the Indian constitution was formed, even in ancient India, there was a strict code of law that was followed as religiously as every custom and tradition was followed at that time. And how do we know that? The ancient literatures like Dharmshastras written in Sanskrit gives us the information about the legal structure of the past. Now that I've told you about the Dharam Shastras, let us dive deeper into history. So in ancient India, there were innumerable and often overlapping local laws. Different communities had different laws, depending upon what kind of a government was present at that time and how much freedom the lawmakers had to administer these laws amongst their own. In many cases, the punishment that two individuals received for the same crime that was committed vary depending upon what caste they belong to. Here the lower castes were given harsher punishments as compared to the higher castes. And after the arrival of the British in India, this slowly began to change. Since their arrival, the system of law further began to evolve according to the changing times. There were many who believed that it was the British colonialists who introduced the rule of law in India. Though many historians have disputed this claim based on several grounds, two of them are prominent. The first is that the colonial law was arbitrary, meaning they only used their power for their own selfish reasons and not for the purpose of running a smooth administration. 
The second is that the Indian nationalists themselves played a very prominent role in the development of the legal sphere in British India. Now we need to remember something. It is not just our duty to simply elect our representatives, but it is our responsibility to ensure that they are functioning correctly and making the right decisions for us. We can do by using newspapers and media to carefully follow the work that has been done by our MPs. We also need to alert and criticize their actions when we feel their actions are wrong. The success of any democracy is directly proportional to the level of enthusiasm of its people. The more involved the people are, the more successful is the democracy. If only there is enough involvement of the people, that is when the parliament is able to perform according to the people's expectations. With this, I have come to the end of this session and I will be back soon with other interesting topics. Until then, you keep learning. Bye. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.